Today in the news, we got a lot of clarifications and some new information for Zen 4. What's up guys, I'm Snows, and this is your boot sequence. But first, today's sponsor, Morning Brew. In the morning, do you aimlessly go through your social media to try and find something interesting, but end up with mostly dry and sometimes boring articles? Well, in the last couple of weeks, I started using Morning Brew. No, it's not a coffee. It's a free daily newsletter I get every morning that only takes five minutes to read and catches me up on business, finance, and tech. It's pretty witty too. Last week, I found out that LinkedIn has ghostwriters that get paid more in an hour than me in two weeks, so, uh, Help me out here and go subscribe to Morning Brew for free by using morningbrewdaily.com slash boot sequence or by clicking the link in the description down below. It takes less than 15 seconds, so seriously, help me out here. Sign up. Let's get started with AMD. Ever since the company released information on the uh, Zen 4 architecture, people have been going back and forth on what exactly AMD's figures meant. Is a single thread uplift of over 15% relevant? Does 31% faster than a 12900K mean anything? How about the cache? Is twice the size that good? Is it just a refresh with more cache? You get what I mean, lots of questions. The issue here is simply that we don't have all or enough information. Zen 4 has been announced, but it's not in the mass production phase just yet. Thankfully though, that isn't stopping their marketing team from spilling the beans here and there. Robert Halleck has been making his rounds of interviews and he gave us quite a lot. So let's take a look at the important beans. First, about that 15% single thread uplift. During his interview with Tech Power Up, he said that it's basically a temporary number and that they were purposefully conservative about it. Adding that, they intend to publish the breakdown of IPC versus frequency gains later this summer. Basically, it's too early to have the definitive info. In terms of the launch release, some people were wondering if we were going to see just high performance chips at the start rather than a full lineup. And to that, Robert just said that uh, we can expect a family. This probably means a similar launch to Ryzen 5000, a 6, 8, 12, and a 16 core. Oh, and adding to that, during his interview with Hot Hardware, Robert kind of slipped in a golden bean. He said that, sure, 16 cores is the max, but, well, actually, let me play the clip. It's worth noting that we're getting 40 plus percent more performance out of that core count right now. So that doesn't seem too bad. 40% plus more performance on a Zen 4 16 core versus the last generation, that's nice. And he even adds a little right now to sort of presume it's gonna get better over time. He was then asked about 3D vCache and if Zen 4 would have it. Robert said that they don't have anything specific for Zen 4 just yet, but they aren't discarding the idea. Maybe we'll get another 7000 X3D 8 core specifically for gaming, it would make sense. When asked about the integrated graphics in the IO die, he essentially said what we all thought. It's just for you to get up to four display outputs and to have the benefit of using AMD's encoders and decoders. He went as far as to say that this is not an APU, but just a processor that has graphics. For AMD, an APU means a processor with powerful enough graphics that is capable of playing games and that has all of the bells and whistles. Also adding that a proper APU lineup is still in the roadmap. So that's nice. Oh, and if you're wondering why the CPU has this weird shape, well, on LGA socket CPUs like this Threadripper or this Intel one, uh, usually you see capacitors under in that little cutout area. Unfortunately, Zen 4 doesn't have that cutout on the AM5 socket, so they had to put them somewhere. So they cut out the IHS to fit these little caps. Now I gotta put this back because this is thousands of dollars in my hands and I do not wanna drop it. One thing that I was personally curious about was the overclocking on B650. It wasn't anywhere on the presentation slides. Well, fret not, overclocking is going to be available on all 600 series motherboards, including B650. And that goes for both both CPU and memory overclocking. Robert was also asked about CPU overclocking headroom, like how much more can we go past the 5.5 gigahertz shown in the uh, ghost wire demo? Well, he said that 5.5 gigahertz was actually very easy for Zen 4. In fact, they achieved that on a early silicon 16 core prototype with an off the shelf liquid cooler. That is really impressive, especially considering it wasn't even running at its full TDP slash PPT power limit. At least that's 
that's what Robert said over on Reddit. Oh, and about that uh, TDP and PPT, Robert clarified that 170 watts is the TDP, while 230 watts is the PPT. Kind of like how 105 watts is the TDP of the 5950X, but 143 watts is what the processor consumes when it's being stress tested. There were also other less important things that were uh, clarified during these interviews, like how X670E, the chipset, is fanless, which makes me think that X670 and B650 are probably fanless too. Also, the USB situation was clarified, saying that the USB spec known as USB 4 will be available to motherboard manufacturers, it's just that it won't reach the full 40 gigabits per second spec. For people who need a lot of PCIe lanes, Robert also clarified that this slide, which mentions 24 PCIe lanes, well, it actually means that the CPU has 28 lanes, but four are used for the downlink to the chipset, which means all 24 CPU bound lanes are available to the user. That's four more than the last gen. So yeah, lots of info, but it's now clear that Zen 4 is hiding a lot more than what was shown during the presentation at Computex. Oh, by the way, little funny thing about Computex. Have you seen this from Biostar? So yeah, anyways guys, that is pretty much it for today's video. Hopefully you've enjoyed. Drop a like if you liked it, a comment if you wanna talk about what we've uh, just covered. As usual, you can click right here to see the latest video, right here to subscribe to the channel. Stay frosty, my dudes, and I'll see you on the next one. Take care. Do you guys have slush puppies in the US? Do they have slush puppies uh, in the US? Yes, no, yes. This is not a slush puppy, it just has water in it, but I'm wondering, really? answer in the comments below. You can go to slushpuppy.ca. Yeah.